Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my first encounter, a long overdue encounter with a brand I have had one eye on since the earliest days of this channel. That brand is Scurfa. Now, when I first came across them in 2016, they were a hardcore British dive watch brand owned by a North Sea diver, producing a small range of very simple, very purposeful quartz dive watches. Their Diver 1, which was their first model, features a Ronda Quartz, 500 meters of water resistance, helium escape valve, super legible handset, and a price tag around 200 pounds. The watch that I'm gonna to unbox today for our mutual pleasure is from their newer Treasure Seeker range. Still more than dive capable, but in their own words, designed to stand out in every environment and not just scraping the barnacles off an oil rig. And judging by how many of the different color variants are sold out already, it seems there has been plenty of demand for a Scarfa that isn't quite as hardcore, but is still definitely a Scarfa. Now, I didn't just buy one of these, but I know a man who did, Josh, a subscriber over in Melbourne. He bought one direct from Scarfa in the UK and got it shipped to me here directly in Sydney. Thank you very much, Josh, much appreciated. Now, talking of shipping, do you want to guess how much Josh paid for international shipping? Put it this way, he could have bought a decent watch for the price charged. Let's flip the camera and find out. Look at that box. I mean, I've seen a few boxes in my time, but this one is pretty spectacular. Check the barcodes. Look at those corners. Gorgeous. That is a lovely shade of kind of mustard yellow and see how they've used red to complement and contrast it. Yeah pretty special and so it should be because Josh paid 45 pounds that's over 80 Aussie dollars for the privilege of having DHL ship his Scarfa in one of these little boxes I'm not accusing Scarfa of gouging international shipping is ridiculously expensive at the moment and you know the pound isn't quite what it used to be post Brexit put it that way but yeah massively expensive. He could have got a couple of Casio Royales for that, so I hope the contents are worth it. Let's find out. Okay, we're getting closer. Looks like there is a, I'm not sure whether it's complimentary or not, but it looks like there is a rubber strap to go along with it. Scarf I watch is branded and another bit of packaging here. And that is quite a cool bit of packaging, isn't it? It's plasticky. Not quite sure what it is, some kind of screw. Maybe there's some kind of diving oil rig related thing that I'm just not getting the reference for. Anyway, I'm sure it has protected this watch nicely in transit. Which of the colors did Josh go for? He was debating between two of them, but one of them had sold out already, so the decision was a simple one for him. I won't dox the man, I'll cover his name up there and blur it out if it was exposed. What color did he go for? He went for orange. Always a great choice with a diver, I think. And good news, we have some movement. The hand is going, which is always great. Looks like it's about to tick over at midnight, so I'll be careful where I'm setting this one. And more good news, heaps of stickers. I've had a few unboxings recently where there has been a lack of stickers. Not in this case. Let's do some peeling. Okay, two stickers to go. The one on the case back, I will of course show you that. A little later on, looks like a diver there, surprise, surprise. And the big one, the one on the dial protector. Yeah, that looks great. Love that shade of orange. Yeah, initial impressions on this one are very favorable. I think I know which factory this one came from. The standard of finishing, some of the components, that clasp there, some of the sticker placements. I've been doing this for a while and you get an impression from a watch, the standard overall, you know, Scarfa don't make these themselves, they get them made for them in a factory in the Far East. There are two or three factories that I highly rate that do most of the watches that I review on the channel, most of the micro brand watches that I review on the channel anyway. And I suspect this Scarfa Treasure Seeker came from one of the better ones. Yeah, very, very nice. Really interesting mixture of brushed and polished case finishing. TS for Treasure Seeker on the crown there. And we've got that hexagonal dial just adding a little bit of something. Great color, really nice orange. All right, let's get this one sized and properly set and do the vital statistics. 
All right, we're back, we're sized and we're set, but that took a little bit longer than I had anticipated it would because the bracelet features a pin and collar system. I was expecting screw links. I'm not really complaining too much for the price they're charging though. These are 440 Great British Pounds. That equates to roughly 485 US dollars at the current exchange rate, though plus or minus taxes. I can't tell you what your tax liabilities are because probably for the best, I don't know where you live. I think it's a reasonable price given how nice this watch looks and given how nicely this watch has been made, it seems. Now, clearly this is Scarfa's attempt to go for a bigger slice of the pie. It's certainly more mass market, has broader appeal than their hardcore quartz offerings. As such, I think the set of chosen dimensions perfectly reflects that mass market appeal. 41 and a half mil in diameter, but only 12.3 mil thick, that is nice. 49 mil lug to lug, 20 mil lug width, tapering down to 18, back up to just over 20 at the clasp. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist, it weighs in at 160 grams on the nose, perfectly reflecting what a 41 and a half mil stainless steel diver should weigh. So 316L, stainless steel case, crown, bezel, full stainless bracelet, solid end links, but push pins as discussed. And it is a milled clasp as you had a sneak preview of earlier on. Screw down crown, 300 meters of water resistance. So nice and slim, under 12.5 and yet retaining 300 meters of water resistance. That is a piece of very mildly double domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective undercoating. Yep, plenty of it. Maybe just a slightly bluey purple tinge to that. Ceramic bezel insert. The bezel is 120 click, unidirectional, and it's really, really quite nice and everything lines up as it should. The bezel insert itself isn't particularly Interesting, I have to say, it does look like an off-the-shelf item, but it kind of goes with the watch overall. And it's pumped full of loom, as I'll show you in just a minute or two. Really interesting finish, vertical brushing to the scallops in the side of the case, but high polish to that kind of bold outer edge. Similarly, it's a high polished bezel with some little machine cutouts there. Now the bezel, as you saw, was plenty grippy, maybe not super grippy if you are gonna be wearing diving gloves. Like I said, this is just not as hardcore as some of their other offerings. Drilled lugs though, you saw earlier on a supplied rubber strap. I'm not gonna bother fitting that today. It looked fairly standard, but yeah, nice and easy if you do wanna swap back and forth. Overall, the finish is good and TS4 treasure seeker on the crown. And it's one of these Jubilee bracelets halfway between an engineer and a Jubilee. It's a kind of flat link Jubilee. Two high polished and three brushed. And again, it's a good looking bracelet. You spotted the clasp. Scarfa watches etched portrait style into the clasp. And yeah, no problems at all there. Milled upper, milled lower, three holes of micro adjust. I would normally be asking for one more, but they are fairly short links. Yeah, I'm still gonna be asking for one more. Perhaps if the clasp was slightly longer, that would really bridge the gap between those two links. Case back, now because this one is only on loan and I gotta send it back to Josh, I did manage to squeeze in a little bit of macro footage, so here is what the case back looks like under my macro lens, it's very nice, I presume that is a diver seeking his treasure. Screw down, stainless steel, 300 meters of water resistance as discussed, and behind that case back is a Miyota 9015, hence why they were able to keep it under 12 and a half mil thick. And it's a good looking and nicely legible dial and handset, I think. Applied indices, I love that honeycomb. It just adds another element to what otherwise might have been a slightly plain looking design. Scarfa watches, the same logo found on the bracelet clasp is applied there beneath the triangle at 12. Triangle at 12 and it's tic-tac, ovoid batons applied everywhere else. The dial itself has been beveled to accommodate the date complication at the three o'clock, printed minute track around the outer edge and printed numerals for the five minutes set into that minute track. All indices are surrounded in black today, as are the hands. Again, I do like that, especially with the orange. Like the indices, the hands are gently rounded at both ends, and there is a little triangular tip to the very slender second hand. Quite a slender hand set overall, to be honest. The hands themselves are slimmer than the indices. You know, Scarfa are not alone in doing that. Have a look at a Rolex Oyster Perpetual, for example, and you will see exactly the same thing. Again, perhaps they could have been slightly beefier, but I keep having to remind myself this isn't an out and out dive watch, it's an everyday watch, and as such, the hands are probably fine. They are pumped full of loom though, BGW9 and a heap of it 
in the hands, in those indices, and all over that ceramic bezel insert as well. If I turn the speed up on this, no problems at all. End of the 20 minute test, which I reckon is about four to five hours of human eye, you can still see everything here. Great job on the loom. And it wears really nicely. I've got it done up relatively tight, but it fits my seven inch wrist well, I think. 49 lug to lug, you're thinking, oh, that might be a bit much, but check the downturn. Those lugs sit a two or three mil beneath the bottom of the case, so it conforms to my wrist beautifully. You don't get a huge amount of flex from these kind of Jubilee style bracelets, that's not really the point. You get the look of a Jubilee, you get the mixed finish, but you get something a little bit sturdier and a little bit chunkier. It's a nice clasp. I would have liked one more hole of micro adjust, but I hope that Josh gets as good a fit as I did. Overhead shot, yeah, again, slightly larger hour and minute hands would have helped with legibility there. You can really see that they are slimmer than the indices, but yeah, you can still see that honeycomb pattern on the dial, and it's a glorious shade of orange, I think. Really good looking. So my first encounter with Scarfa then, perhaps not quite the same encounter that I would have had with the brand had I managed to get my hands on one five years ago, but a very satisfying encounter nonetheless. This is a nice looking watch, very, very comfortable, well machined, sensible movement choice, decent price given the movement choice and how well finished the whole watch is. Love some of the color schemes. I'm not sure I would quite have felt the same way if I had been sent a blue one by Josh or a black one or one of the slightly more mundane colorways, but in yellow, in orange, in some of the bright vibrant colors, this one has got a lot going for it. Hence why most of them are sold out already. Not as hardcore as before, but I think a good business move by Scarfa. I reckon they'll sell a ton of these and deservedly so. If you'd like an orange diver, but not this orange diver, why not check out one of these other two orange divers? Thanks for watching. See you again in a future video.